Hello, welcome to Biggest Little Library. I'm Tammy Ruff. And I'm Amy Newberry. We're your two librarians discussing all the books in the stacks. The new and notable. The lost and forgotten. The hot and the not. But before we get started on our great episode today, Tams. I know. First, we want to make sure everybody heads over to our website and subscribes to our newsletter because it's the best way to stay. It is on top of everything great that's Biggest Little Library, like... Like our big thing that is happening today, which is, yay, our summer reading guide. Mm -hmm. We're really excited. We're going to be talking about, well, that. We're going to be talking about that. And our newsletter subscribers definitely get like a portion of it. Remember, our Patreon subscribers get the entire ginormous thing that we lovingly created. Yes. Good job. Good job, Tams, on that. Well, thanks. And today we have Taryn and Jamie joining us because, of course, they've read and contributed to the guide. So I mean, welcome. Thank you. Thanks. Ladies. Okay. And we're, hit, we're sitting here, I have to mention, without plexiglass, without masks, because we have all had our, our shot. We have. Very it's exciting. exciting. It's very exciting. It is very exciting. Like, this is the first, I don't feel like there's this weird... I don't know. You know, the plexiglass makes me feel like I'm at like the DMV right. yes. or like a doctor's office and they're like, sign your name on the form and then you have to like slide things under. So it feels a little more intimate now. Mm-hmm. Feels a little more normal. Yes. Yeah. Thank nice. God. Yes. Love the normal. Okay. okay. So let me just start by saying you have learned some skills, Tammy Ruff. I have. I have learned <laughs> Affinity Publisher, and I'm feeling pretty good about this old dog. Learn understanding it. some new tricks. <laughs> you yeah. should, because it looks beautiful. It's oh, so thanks. bright and colorful. When you sent us via text, like the cover, yeah. I was, were you so excited? <laughs> oh my gosh, so excited. It's, it's so pretty. It's so pretty. It, lo- it feels like summer. Yeah. It does. And, it does. And look at our cute little icons on there. I know. I they're, love it. They're adorable. So. Yeah. Good well, I'm glad everybody likes a cover too. How many books are in this thing? There are 53. 53 books mm-hmm. that are being published. Well, there are a few. You know, we have a, a couple of additions from the last time. Like we have our road trips. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so there are just four that are, you know. Great road trip. Great road trip uh, listens. But the rest... Mm-hmm. Are all new books? New books coming out May, not May, June, June July, July, and August. And August. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yes. Look at us yeah. on the ball. Okay, so everybody's going to talk about. I think we're going to start with our favorite read that we read mm-hmm. from Net Galley. We all got it from Net Galley. Yes, we mm-hmm. did. Yes. Yeah. I know. So who wants to start? Who's feeling? Who's feeling like the leader of the pack <laughs> today? <laughs> I'll go. Okay. Thanks, okay. Tam. <laughs> no. You know. Yeah. Okay. You know what this is like. You know when you're teaching a lesson and you uh-huh. like ask a question and then you give them wait time, <laughs> and you're just praying. You're wishing upon a star. Like, please, not just one person put up their hand with the answer. You know. Yes. Thanks, Tammy, for being. You're susceptible to it. I am. You I'm are. always the one going, oh, nobody's going to help the teacher out. I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll go first. I'll go first. Yeah. Okay. So, so tell us what you read. Okay. So I read a mystery thriller, which I do really enjoy, you know, mysteries and, and thrillers. I, I don't read a lot of them. And then when I read one, I go, yeah, I really like these. You know, by comparison, you read so many more than me. This is true. <laughs> right. Do you read a lot? I don't, but... I actually read one from the guide as well, and it reminded me that I kind of like the mystery yeah. and thrillers, and I don't often go for them. Nope. Taryn, what do you think of them? I don't read them at all. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. So I read What's Done in Darkness by Laura McHugh, and it is um, 256 pages. comes out June 22nd. And it is, it's a great story about a 17-year-old girl, Sarah Beth, who her family has, the parents have kind of this um, little blip in their marriage, and the mom's response is to take the whole family away from their small community and move them into like the Ozark Mountains, um, and they become very religious. They were religious before, but now they're really, they're like all in. Have you ever seen the show, The Ozarks? Yes. It's like meth crazy. I mean, I don't know if that's really the way it is. I'm not trying to like belittle yeah. our people in the Ozarks, but. 
Yeah, I've never been, so I don't know. I don't know. But it's yeah, the, I think the TV show is terrific. Yeah, it's really I um, love Jason Bateman. <laughs> I know he's so, so good. great. Um, so the family goes there, and it's kind of it seems like some of the things that we've heard in the news before. You know, where a small community just becomes very devout, and and they change the way they live. So they live, you know, on a farm, and the girls wear long dresses, and they're you know they wear their hair long, and you know it's just very. Um, for Sarah Beth, it's very constricting when she grew up going to regular middle school and elementary school. And so all of a sudden now they're homeschooled and she's missing all of her friends. And anyway, she's working the farm stand and she's kidnapped and she is kept blindfolded. She never saw the face of the person who kidnapped her. She doesn't know where she was kept. Um, th- you, as the novel unfolds, you learn more about the time that she was um, you know, held as a captive. But she is released, and this isn't really giving anything away because you know this, even reading the jacket, that she is released, and unfortunately, they never find anyone uh, to charge with anything and the local police don't really research and and try to do anything with the case most of the people feel like because she was so unhappy in their new situation that she just ran away and she's faking it that Hmm. she really wasn't kidnapped but she was weird and so um what happens next is that there's a new uh, detective who comes on um, the scene. And I can't remember, let's see, what's his name? Nick Farrow. And he calls her, he cold calls her one day. She doesn't live with the family anymore. She lives on her own. And it talks to her about how there's a similar abduction and he thinks they're connected and will she help? And so the novel is really about her going back and, you know, addressing like the family and the dynamics and the situation around this religion and a few other things that are added in there too. And what I liked is that it's not that you you can't work on kind of figuring out who might be a suspect as you're reading, but you don't feel like things are inorganically added to the story to, to toss you off, you know, the, the path. Everything that happens, you kind of go, oh, that could be it. He could do it. She could do it. You know, they could do it. And so it really does take till the very end. And then you're like, oh, you know, you're not surprised because it's something that you think is going to happen. Mm. But I think she does a, a just a really great job of creating this, um, you know, this mystery about this young girl. So is it a mystery or is it a psychological thriller or does it cross both ways? I think it's kind of both okay. because she's held, you know, for a, an amount of time where she's completely blindfolded. And so um, I think that's psychologically an mm-hmm. issue, you know, that she deals with in her life five years afterward, which is when the story really unfolds. Hmm. But but I think would say more of a stronger mystery of like who done it, oh. you know. Okay. How many you know, like who done it? Who done it? How many stars? You know, I would say it's a good four, you know, 3.8 of four. I just felt like it's light. It's not anything that you're going to hang on, you know, to forever. I think she just did a really good job. Hmm. Yeah. That's lovely. Would you read it, Jamie? I think I might. Yeah. It sounds good. I mean, it sounds interesting. What's interesting is when you first started talking about the story, it almost sounded like it could have been like a nonfiction sort (laughs) of a read. Mm -hmm. Um, Just the way the storyline sounds which I love nonfiction, but mm-hmm. as I've been figuring out, I think I also really like mystery too. Yeah. And it, it kind of reminded me of the JC Lee Dugard story. Yeah. I guess that's what I was yeah. maybe thinking. I was even first thinking about local Elizabeth Smart. Mm-hmm. That was the other one. Mm-hmm. You know, exactly. when there's some sort of religious element involved. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And it's not anti-religious, the book at all. It's just the situation that's taken them away from, mm-hmm. you know, the community and, and created tension between Sarah Beth and her parents and, you know, so. Wow. Excellent. Yeah. So I enjoyed it. Thank you to NetGalley. Thank you, NetGalley. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Who's next? Taryn, let's go in order. All right. I can go next. So my favorite one that I read for the guide was Unwell Women, Misdiagnosis and Myth in a Man-Made World by Eleanor Cleghorn, which comes out. Um, June 8th, and it's 400 pages. Um, this is a nonfiction about um, the history of the treatment of women medically. So not just women, like women's specific diseases like endometriosis, but things like 
women were treated differently for like you know cent- like centuries and centuries and centuries just because we were thought to be I don't know medical enigmas um so it <laughs> talks about things from like the thing uh so it talks about things like from Aristotle's idea or the ancient Greek idea that like women have wandering wombs that make us ill like if the womb like wanders up to your lungs and you have pneumonia or <laughs> that's yeah. odd mm, yeah, yeah. So this was like a big idea for centuries right that like wombs wandered and then hmm. you had to like put them back and like women's illnesses like derived from the fact that like our wombs went a walking so, <laughs> so I'm just trying to think of the man that came up with that idea. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Like, what might it be like to be married to him? <laughs> Look, I don't think it was very great. Um, and it, so it, it kind of starts off then because, you know, recorded history kind of has to start somewhere. And it talks about all the way through the um, 1900s, different ways that women were treated. So, it kind of gets to the point, you know, hysteria was like this catch-all disease for women. Like if you were like stressed or didn't want to be a mother or didn't want to get married, then you were a hysteric and you had to be treated. And one of the ways that they treated you is they, you know, scoop out your ovaries because your ovaries made you crazy. So, oh and my it, God. so it kind Horrible. of creates like this nice long bridge overlook about how like women's diseases have been blamed on us being women and then the treatments are all dependent on that too. And like all the harm that that's caused or like the slow medical progress that's resulted. That's I, fascinating. It's really fascinating. I'm afraid if I read it, I'm going to be pissed off. I know I was going to yeah. say this book sounds really frustrating. It is. It's, it's got some, a little bit of hopeful stuff at the end. So the author became interested in this topic because she was diagnosed with um, lupus. So an autoimmune disease that mostly affects women Mm -hmm. and she became interested in the topic because we rarely talk about autoimmune diseases being sex specific but they really are Mm -hmm. so like pretty much across the board autoimmune diseases are more likely to be diagnosed in women so the flip side of this you know wandering womb scoop out the ovaries thing is that nobody has spent time researching like why do women get autoimmune diseases like what is it about women specifically that puts puts us at higher risk Mm, exactly yeah and it ties in really well not to mention this book again on this podcast (laughs) (laughs) I know what we're gonna say (laughs) but for those who liked invisible women you would like unwell women for many of the same reasons that it it talks about the ways in which these long-standing ideas have created blindnesses or biases in the medical world towards women historically well, I think probably every one of us sitting around this table has probably been to a doctor where we felt like maybe our concerns weren't oh, heard yeah. because perhaps, and I'm not knocking male doctors, but they're not even, sometimes even with female doctors where you feel like you're not, like somebody doesn't believe you or, you know, mm-hmm. like it's somehow up here, like they need to put you, I, I remember a time in my life where they wanted to put me on um, antidepressants because they couldn't right. like diagnose what I was struggling with so clearly it was probably I was just depressed and if I wasn't depressed then I wouldn't feel those symptoms anymore and I'm like okay I absolutely I have nothing against people who take antidepressants but I'm like I'm not depressed like I have a real problem right yeah like a physical ailment yes. I know like I had a you know I had doctors not believe me and it just turns out that like my gallbladder wasn't working anymore <laughs> and it took like a really long time for yeah and then you know a beloved nurse practitioner was like, no, that's what, this is what you have. I'm sending you for a scan. And it was like, I don't know, two years. Yeah. I'd been sick. And she was like, like in literally the first time she met me, she was like, oh, this is your problem. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. This looks amazing. Yeah. It's so good. Five stars for me. How fast does it read what like fast or is it like you have to digest it? Um, she's a journalist. So she does a really good job of, um, covering the subject in like a really approachable way. So it's not like an academic text where you're constantly stumbling over like these really niche yeah. citations. So she keeps it, she keeps it moving and she drops a lot of really interesting things that I feel like women should know. Like she drops some women's history along the way, like some women physicians that like in the 1400s were trying to change this even back then because you know, like what ultimately happens is 
they get covered up by like the tide of male medicine. Mm -hmm. And then we feel like there was no women doctors. So like she mentions um, the book of the city of ladies, which was written in the 1400s by Christine de Pizan. I don't know, but she, it's a novel historical kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And she writes a city of like real life women. So, you know, like different historical figures. And she's mentioned because she was a a very important physician in France and she made it like her life's work to keep women's history alive. And so like, because of women like her, we have some of these like women's written medical texts. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. That is interesting. When does it come out? June 8th. Awesome. I'm going to put that on my list. Also, I am going to read Invisible Women. I think you should listen to it. It's a great audio book. It's a great audio book. Okay. The author reads it and she does a great job. You can feel her passion. (laughs) <laughs> yes <laughs> she's also great on twitter oh good to know yeah yeah excellent sweet yeah okay james okay uh so i also read a mystery or thriller i guess um called did i say you could go by melanie melanie gideon um it's 368 pages and it comes out august 3rd it did not read like it was 368 pages wow i read probably um you know, 60% of the book yesterday in a few oh, hours. Wow. Really? And so, yeah, just, I think that's part of what my draw was towards a couple of the mystery and thriller titles for the summer guide, because fast reads like that feel like summer reads, something that you can just sit down yeah. in a few hours while you're sitting in a lawn chair mm-hmm. and, <laughs> you Digest know, it. yeah. And it's just fun. It's not something you have to think a ton about. It's, you know, just entertainment, I think. And so I enjoyed this one a lot. It was not what I was expecting. Um, It's about two single moms. They live in the Bay Area. And uh, their daughters go to the private school. And they meet, you know, when their daughters are in kindergarten at the kind of kindergarten, you know, family meet and greet. And they're the only two single moms. And so, of course, Mm. the friendship develops. um, And it's interesting because you get the perspective, you know, each chapter is a different uh, character's perspective, but you get the mom's perspective, um, you know, back and forth between the two of them quite a bit in the beginning of the book when the girls are young. When the girls are teenagers, you start getting chapters from their perspective, which is really fascinating. I I love it when you get character. I love that, that switch back and forth. I do too. I really enjoyed that. And I enjoyed having the teenage daughter's perspective in there. Um, Maybe because I enjoy YA also, Mm -hmm. it kind of maybe drew in a little bit of that. And um, really the thriller is kind of all based in some, um, some things that are happening on the internet. There's an anonymous um, app, which, uh, you know, anything anonymous online is horrible bad news, <laughs> bad bad news. news. and uh, the app is called mom anonymous and so it's <laughs> little it puts the moms from the school into little pods and then they all have fake names um, they all you know try really hard not to reveal their identity but they all just sit and gossip in these <gasps> like text chains back and forth to each other about things mm-hmm. that are going on so of course one of the moms ends up you know not being super nice. Um, she does some pretty shady things and you're kind of trying to figure out and piece together who's behind all of this. And there's definite twists and turns. Um, even when I thought I had everything kind of figured out by the end as it was unfolding, you kind of think like, okay, well, this is the explanation for some of these things that have happened. And then you get to the very end and it's like one of the last chapters and you're like, oh, there's more. (laughs) So that's super fun. So I really enjoyed that. And I enjoyed the commentary about, you know, just what the internet is doing to teenagers, teenage girls, especially. I think it's just so hard. Um, The, you know, the daughters were on Instagram and definitely having some issues with, you know, what was happening on social media in their lives. And so it was kind of interesting commentary about that real problem, that real situation as well. So I enjoyed it. It was good. Sounds great. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I have to go back to that, um, the commentary on social media, because I think that that's something we need to think about and talk about more. And it kind of t- takes me back to that book that you told me about how to break up with your phone. Yes. And then the social dilemma, which we watched and talked right. about, I don't know, 
a while back, right? <laughs> I think it was episode 41. Oh, Ooh. Taryn, look at you busting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's like there's, you know, it's relevant. It's fresh. It is. And I don't know that. I think it's, we're kind of starting to talk more about it now, which is great. But I think really that like how to break up with your phone book was so great because I think that's the solution, right? Mm-hmm. Is that we need to take breaks from these things. But then when the whole purpose of some of these apps is to addict us to our phones. And when you're a teenager, I don't know yeah. how you battle against that. Right. It just seems like a such a losing battle. Especially for young girls. Oh, mm-hmm. I know. Yeah. Well, good. So when does it come out again? So that comes out August 3rd. Sweet. Nice. And what's funny is those two books that you and I talked about are on the same page. Isn't that funny? <laughs> they are. <laughs> How cute is that? Yeah. Okay, Amy. How about you? I, okay, so I read a couple. There's, there's, look, I have two on this page. You do. I know. So the one I'm going to talk about is called Above and Beyond by Saskia Swan and Nicola Stowe. And I picked it up because, you know, I have an affinity for like all things flight, Mm -hmm. you know, I like to fly. It is the secrets of like a private, this girl, her name's Saskia, obviously, and she's a private flight attendant. So, you know, those corporate jets or like people who own jets, like their own big jets, like big ones, they actually employ flight attendants and it's a very discreet job. Like you have to be willing to sign all these like non-disclosures about whoever you're flying around and whoever the owner is of the, of the, um, of the plane. And so this young girl, she's actually British and she's living in London and um, flying for like a commercial airliner. And I don't know if you guys know this, but they initially, when you first get hired on at a commercial airliner, generally speaking, and I don't know if this is still true to this day, but I think it is, you don't get paid very well in the beginning. Like the first couple of years you're on probation and you're not, you're not, it's not like glamour money, right? Mm -hmm. So you're flying around and it's pretty, I mean, it's, it's hard knocks. You're, you're, living in a, usually a crash pad with somebody and you're just trying to make ends meet. And so she is, um, she's got a little bit of a shopping problem, (laughs) which leads into this, like, what, how am I going to make money? Because my job is not cutting it. And she's at a bar, like burning her last 10 bucks or whatever, and runs into this guy who is a pilot for like a private airliner. Mm -hmm. So he's flying around some rich people He goes, you know, they're always looking for flight attendants. And so she ends up going on this interview and it is, I'm just going to tell you, it is everything you would think it would be. Like you show up, you have to look a certain way. You Mm -hmm. have to weigh a certain amount. You have to be pulled together and have kind of, you have to be talented and accomplished and you know, they just, it's like exactly what they want you to be. And so she shows up, she gets the job and she ends up like flying around for some really powerful Russian guy. I don't know who it is, Uh oh! <laughs> but the whole time I'm picturing some very like Russian leader. Um, I just mouthed to my mom the name Mazepin, which <gasps> is, I, he's a Russian oligarch. He's a Russian oligarch and he, his son is in, is a formula one driver because he pays at least $35 million for his son to have a seat. Okay. Oh my gosh. It could very well be this person. Yeah, he's like, he's like very rich and very famous for being rich in Russia. Okay, yeah. so just imagine being young, beautiful, and a flight attendant where you're, you've are you signed a non-disclosure. And like, so she gets, all, like, if they don't like the way you have your hair styled, your makeup, you have to reapply all the time. When she gets the job, they take her to Harrods. They get her outfitted in Prada and Hermes. I mean, like, wow. everything is designer and haute couture. It's nice. Like, it sounds glamorous. Until you get to the job and then yeah. all of a sudden you decide that like this guy's a pig and mm-hmm. he expects way more than you're getting paid for. Although, although, so the things that bothered me were obviously like, wow, you made some really bad decisions. However, she's young and I don't know that I made great decisions at that age, so I can't really judge it. She is compensated for some of those bad decisions with some very nice jewelry, um, large bonuses, so, hmm. you know, it's kind of what you think it is. That sounds fascinating. It, it was 
fascinating because it becomes a lifestyle that you get very accustomed to. You Every quarter, you're taken to Harrods and you get a whole new lineup of clothing. I mean, like stuff that we would never, like, let's just be honest, like, none <laughs> of us at this table Mm-mm. would ever be wearing anything. Like their, their spring wardrobe is more than I would spend in 10 years on, on clothing. And I like to shop. Yeah. So it's a lifestyle and like she gets like huge diamond earrings. I mean, jewelry out the yin yang and yeah, but you're making some compromises for that. So it's hard. It's a hard lifestyle, I think, to get out of because then the money, the lifestyle, the, you know, you go someplace and you stay at the finest hotels and you have a credit card to eat whatever you want and drink whatever you want. But you have to be ready to go if they change their mind and you think you're going to Chicago tomorrow. But no, guess what? You're going to Hong Kong right now. That's what's happening. So you can't have any real social life. Mm -hmm. You have no, you know, and that was one of the questions. Like, do you have a boyfriend? Are you married? Do you have children? Do you plan? Like, they want to know that because you need to be somewhat isolated. Wow. Yeah. It's a real thing. Yeah. I, Mm. I've been on a private plane like that. It was on the ground though. We Mm -hmm. didn't fly with him, but it was Pennington's plane here in town. Oh yeah. You know, that Pennington and his um, pilot gave us a tour. It was a... In our car club. Anyway, Baccarat China and oh. Crystal and stuff like that on. I mean, it's it, it's was so luxurious. And he told us the same as a pilot that he's on call his whole life. Like yeah. he's never not you, yeah. on call. Like if they decide we're going to go to Paris tomorrow, yeah. then he has, that's okay. He's got to get it going. Like if you don't have the temperature of the bathtub drawn to the exact, um, and you don't have the right oils in it. And, the, and here's my favorite. And the petals, the rose petals <laughs> dropped in there oh, correctly. Brother. And here's the thing, like you have to make sure every hair is taken off the floor because as soon as the wife and the children exit the plane, the next trip, here comes the mistress number one. And you can't have any evidence. Oh my goodness. Gosh. And it's like, it's not just one mistress. Like there are several that string through. And I mean, it's, it was, oh. it was like, wow, people live like this. How long did she do this job? She, that's a good question because I read it a while back. I want to say like seven years-ish, 10 years. That's a maybe. long time. And I could yeah. be wrong. So don't quote me on that because okay. I, it's, been a, it's been a minute since I read it. But okay. she ended up going to work for like, she worked for a couple different people because she does get involved with the, the guy that she's, you know, the billionaire. Oh boy. And we find out, well, I don't want to give too much away. Anyway, so she ends up moving on to do other things. But it just, it was just a fascinating glimpse into a world that I hope never to inhabit. But I am fascinated by people who have that much money. Yeah. 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 Where do you get it from? These are questions I need answers to. (laughs) Right. I'm like, how do you get that wealthy that you don't, you don't just have a jet. You have like a 737 or a 747 converted and it's got compartments and how do you have, and everything is the best champagne, the best caviar, the best, everything has to be perfect. How do you have that kind of money? I mean, you know I someone. Know. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Crazy. Doesn't really sound that much fun to me. Thank you. I was way. just thinking no. that too. Yeah. Like that's not what I would want. Mm-mm. No, I don't want all that messy, whatever. Says all teachers that are. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Just, just, mm. No, I mean, I wouldn't either. I just find it like the wastefulness. Mm-hmm. Mm. I, I just, it's fascinating to me that you can spend that kind of money and not even think about like, oh, you just probably spent a million dollars on the quarterly, like clothing change for your ladies. I'm, uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm. I have a lot better way to spend a million dollars. Right. <laughs> Send it to me. Let's keep them in the same outfit for the season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's what I read. That was, sounds really interesting. It was it interesting. Does. It was a fast read. It comes out on June 3rd. It's 257 pages in case you wanted to know. And the cover is, I think, pretty good. It, it gives is. You, mm-hmm. gives you it a does. good look on what we're getting, what you're going to get. So. So, Tams, tell us what else you put into this lovely guide because it's fabulous. So, we have um, for like our Winnemucca ladies <gasps> in yes. the book club, we put together a little book club barbecue uh, get together for the, for the summer. Um, so, there's some recipes in there. And then we know that for a lot of people in the summer, it's time to go road tripping. Mm-hmm. And so we came up with some good, um, really funny, and um, and one of them's um, a nonfiction, but funny also. I guess I should just say they're all funny. They are. Um, but great audiobooks. 
for drives for drives. Yeah, that's a good that's a good ad. Yeah. Did you come up on that on your own, or did we talk about that? We talked about it. We, we, we well, we talked about audiobooks, and so I just you know kind of moved it into when would you be you know listening in the summertime and probably in your car on a long trip. That's true. Yeah, that's very true. So, Amy, you came up with a really fun, fun um, reading activity. I know we usually, kids, have summer reading <laughs> programs, but I loved this idea that you came up with. Share with our listeners. I, yeah, so I don't even know. I'm trying to think, like, where the uh, birth of the idea came from. But it, long story short, I usually try to do some sort of summer reading thing. Yeah. Because, we, you know, you of course you want your people to read whether they're kids or whether they're teachers or friends or whatever. And so I think, I think that that's like the diehard librarian, at least in me. And I know you guys love to read like I do. So we came up with the summer reading relay. Do you want me to tell you more? Yes, about it? please <laughs> tell me more about it. Well, I will tell you that Jamie is on our team, on my team. I am. Um, so what I did at, at our high school is basically a relay. I don't know because I did not run track. But I do know enough to know that there are four people on a relay team. And I went to confirm this with our, one of our track people. <laughs> I said to Anna, I'm like, four people, right? And she was actually in the video. We created this really cute video oh. that is hysterical. We should put that somewhere so yeah, they can see it. I haven't seen it. Did you see it? I did. It's pretty cute. It's adorable. I mean, it's, it's kind of nerdy, but we loved it. And so we have this really cute video that we blasted out to the staff and to the students. And... Basically, it tells them the rules of the reading relay. You have to have four members of your team. And you're basically just counting your your pages all summer long. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, you might have an anchor, somebody who's really, really good at reading. Yeah. And then maybe you have somebody who's not as good, and but they're still on your team. Yes. So They still count. They still count. Mm -hmm. So I sent it out to the staff. And it's funny. I sent it to our feeder schools, so like Swope and... Um, Clayton and they were very excited and they wanted to join in and have teams and I was like absolutely the more the merrier but the teachers here got kind of crazy and so they started coming up with names I know Jamie's <laughs> giggling over here because oh, yeah, it's hysterical I said I went up to Dawn and I'm like Dawn who's on our team I said Dawn I said we're you know we can't win because I'm on the team and obviously I cannot win <laughs> somebody else has to win and I said, but we still have to like, we could have bragging rights. So I need you to come up with a really good team name for us. And she's like, okay. And I'm like, it's gotta be funny. That's why I came to you because I'm not the person to be funny, but Dawn, she's the person. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> so like two minutes later, I get these texts and she's like, what about the Dewey decimators? And then she goes into this long string of things and I'm texting it back and forth to our other two, Jamie and Katie. And I'm like, okay, Jamie, you get to pick because we had it narrowed down to, are you ready? The Dewey Decimators mm -hmm. and the Pros Hose. I know, it's hysterical. <laughs> and um, Jamie goes, yeah, I don't think I can be on a team that <laughs> where we're calling ourselves hoes. Mm -hmm. And I said, yeah, Jay, I, I kind of feel you, but it was pretty funny. And we had this great conversation. One was like, talk wordy to me. Mm -hmm. So cute. I know. And then um, the shush, wait, the shush, the shush kick kickers. Shush, shush kickers. <laughs> And About um, the cinnamon, no, the, the, the cinnamon, cinnamon rolls. rolls. <laughs> hysterical. I know. So I sent out, I, every Friday I send out like four books to the staff. And of course I send, I'm like, hey, our big decision this week was like what to name ourselves. <laughs> and so I listed everybody's names and I put ours in there and all these like our possibilities. And then all of a sudden the principal comes back. He's like, yeah, um, we had to change our name. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, well, what is it? He goes, read the email. <laughs> So I'm like, uh, okay, you can't tell me. But so I go and I read the email and there's one girl on their team. It's Tina. Mm -hmm. And then these three, um, the principal and then two other guys from the history department. And they <laughs> changed their name to Tina and they're reading Rain Bros. It's oh hilarious. Oh my so gosh. Cute. Mm -hmm. I know. <laughs> so anyway, we are going to invite obviously all of our listeners to join us one way or another. So mm -hmm. we're going to put this into the summer reading guide. It'll actually go out in our newsletter and you can do it with us. Mm -hmm. Or you can just do it with your book club, like our Winnemucca people could, you guys could do it in your book club or with your colleagues at work or whatever. Even families, if yeah. your family's spread out, you could, you know, mm -hmm. if you have a big family, it could be a family that lives out of state in your family or it That's could be a, a neighborhood idea. challenge. Is, There's a yeah. lot of different ways you could use it. And really it's about, I think at the end of the day, just getting people to read and to be, feel like they're part of something. Yeah. And so like sweet little Julie down the hall is like, I get too competitive. And I said, Julie, you don't, we don't care what you read. Yeah. Like we just want you on the team because you're fun. And so she's like, I just don't want any pressure. And I'm like, no pressure. 
it's not about pressure. So, yeah. so you have a little, it comes with like a little thing where you can log your pages and then you can have your conversation with your people, but there's tons of ideas on this little post, which will hand out to people in the newsletter. It's adorable. Thank you. Thanks for coming up with it. I love it. Well, it's good times. Yeah. Super fun. And we are the Dewey Decimators. It's and great. She came up with a tagline. We'll be checking you out. <laughs> <laughs> Was that Dawn? Yeah. 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 I'm like, I feel like we need t-shirts. We do need t-shirts. I know. How can we get those oh. made? I don't know, but we need them. I know. And so we're going to give, anybody who participates is going to get a sticker. And I'm going to give them one of our stickers from Biggest Little Library. Um, especially because I love that one. You know the one I'm talking about? Yeah, you know the one I'm talking Mm -hmm. about? And so I think we'll do the same thing for Biggest Little Library. If they participate, then you guys will get a, we'll send you a sticker. Can we do that? Yeah. Yeah. We can do that. Yeah. Yeah. We'll see who participates. Yeah, we've got some merch coming, so we definitely can do that. I know. You guys are going to have to form a team, you and Taryn. I know. And two other people. Hmm. Hmm. Not dad. Okay. Not dad. Taryn, (laughs) listen, let me tell you something. A dad's a reader, but he just doesn't read you know, I had to super fast in a lot of books. Yeah. I got to say, cause he listens to every episode. Yes. So when you say not dead, he's going to be like, hang on. Wait but a second. You is. should do it as a family for it. But listen, I have to tell you something. You're what we call, what, how did I label the, them? The anchor. You're the anchor. Yeah. You're the powerhouse reader. And it's almost not even fair. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not fair. It's not fair because <laughs> we have one of you on staff and I was like, oh my gosh, my worst nightmare is that these people, <laughs> these anchors would all link up together, Ooh. right? Like Rebecca right. and Terry and like, and Katie, if mm-hmm. they were all on the same team, it would be oh a my gosh, nobody, out. nobody else would be able to make <laughs> it, it would, anywhere near it. It would be a wipeout. I can't even keep Terry. She's our assistant principal. Yes. I cannot keep her in books. Yeah. I, she just can't. She just, she comes in like every week and is like, has needs five more books. I'm like, Terry, you've almost read all 20,000 here. (laughs) Yep. Yeah. So they almost need to be on a team where they have a little bit of a reading handicap. Like, I don't know, a toddler that needs to be read too. (laughs) (laughs) Well, lucky for me in the very beginning, when I introduced it, I told them who the reading superstars were. And they all got plucked off by different oh, teams. That I'm like, was smart. I'm like, thank God we like <laughs> spread those people out. Because, mm-hmm. yeah, it would be bad. So people were hot after Terry. Like, it, they could not get to her fast enough. That's great. So, And she went with the first team that asked. Nice. Well, I'm super excited, too, to hear how people are going to do this. So, you know, you can email us, yeah. too. Tammy yeah. at Biggest Little Library or Amy at Biggest Little Library net and let us know. Yeah, it's going to be a fun way to just stay focused. I think it'd be good for kids and good for family. Absolutely, good for anybody. So, yeah. okay. So w- this guide, I just want to say once again, absolutely stunning and gorgeous. <laughs> it is. Thanks. You did such a good job. Thanks. And, and I'm going to just add in there that I have had this bean dip that you have in here, Jay. Oh, the bean dip. It's so good. It is good, and it's so easy. I know. It's tasty. It's my go-to for any any time that I need to go somewhere with an appetizer. It is my go-to. And I love the color of it. Great fun. It well, fun. and you know what? I couldn't put a guide together if we all didn't submit, you know, books that we were interested in. And so, and that we had read. So that's great that everybody was able to, you know, come up with some great ideas for all of you listeners out there to just incorporate into your summer. So I just want to add one more time that you can get the full guide if you become a member of Patreon. You can check that out in the link below. Or if you just want the abbreviated version, we would love to share that for you with you guys. And we've got that available in our newsletter subscribers. So make sure you're signed up for that. It's probably worth mentioning too that if you're a Patreon member that you also get, what else? Access to all the previous. Yes, yes. And you get early episode release and then you get all the Mm -hmm. new ones coming out. And some other random tidbits. Some bonus episodes. Mm-hmm. I know. Oh, yeah, yeah we do have bonus episodes in there. <laughs> that's some of the best stuff is in there. Like Josh Hilden's extra. <laughs> that's <laughs> funny. Riff about whatever he was talking about. Well, and we'll do our next guide comes out in August. Mm-hmm. And that will be fall. So, and then we'll do another one in the winter. Yeah. And they're super cute. So good job, Tams. Well, thanks. And thank you ladies for being yeah, here. Super yeah. fun. I know. It's great. Thanks for listening today. We hope you enjoyed our special episode where we talked about all the new releases that are coming out in the summer release guide and just kind of the fun stuff that we're doing in that. We're bringing you four more recommendations for our Friday for this week. For each one of us, we're going to tell you about the one book that we are most excited to read next. 
And before we go, make sure you check us out on social media, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We know you like us too. So if you could head over to Podchaser and CastBox and leave a review, we would appreciate it. That helps others find our show. And if you're listening in Apple, click on the link in the show notes below. See See you in the stacks. stacks.